Secondly, we, you know, we got to move the ball and score points. That's what offenses do. Uh, we've never been built or wired to, to, you know, aim for 50 points a game. Love it if it happens, but that's, that's not the way we play. 72 yards per game. That's the difference between the dead last Iowa offense and the second worst offense in the entire NCAA. Hello everyone and welcome back to your number one source for Hawkeye sports. I'm Michael Merrick and today we'll be talking about everything you need to know before the kickoff. This week, the Hawkeyes take on a lacking Nevada Wolfpack defense. And if this team has any hope of competing in the Big Ten, they're going to need to improve this historically bad offense. Iowa's offense is currently on pace to not only be the worst offense in the entire NCAA this season, but it's also on pace to be one of the worst offenses since 2000. The Hawkeyes' miserable 158 yards per game is not only 72 yards behind New Mexico State for the nation's worst offense in all of Division I football, but as of now, Iowa is on pace to finish with the worst scoring average, worst yards per play, and worst yards per game of over the last 20 years. On top of that, starting quarterback Spencer Petras has recorded a QBR of just 3.4. That's more than 10 points fewer than the next lowest Power 5 quarterback. But Kirk Ferentz and the rest of the Hawkeyes say they have complete faith in their QB1. Uh, he'll start right now. Uh, that's our plan. Well, you know, something happens in practice. And, uh, you know, we obviously spent a lot of time looking at it, considering it, talking about it. And, you know, we were on two at the start, uh, start of the 20 season. Then we won 12 straight with him at quarterback. So... You know, he, he built up some credit right there, and I thought he played really well. If there was ever a game for Iowa's offense to arrive, it would have to be this week against the Nevada Wolfpack. Nevada comes into tomorrow's contest fresh off of an FCS school scoring 55 points on them. Incarnate Word, yes, that's the name of the school, would go on to beat Nevada 55-41. to 41. And while Nevada does have two wins on their resume, it was to two consistently poor performing schools in Texas State and the aforementioned New Mexico State Aggies. If Iowa can't get things rolling against this defense, changes need to be made. Now let's lighten things up by discussing the incredible Hawkeye defense and special teams. Iowa once again showed that they have one of the nation's top special teams units. As sophomore Lucas Van Ness became the second straight Hawkeye to be awarded the Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week and the Iowa defense also continued their stretch of dominant performances, only allowing 10 points a week ago and giving up 13 in just two weeks. Iowa currently ranks sixth in the nation in points allowed per game and tighten up when it matters most, ranking fourth in red zone defense. This, uh, this week, Iowa is going to take on a big issue at quarterback, literally. Nevada starting quarterback Nate Cox comes in at a whopping six feet nine inches, making him the tallest quarterback in college football. But this giant is no statue. Cox has totaled over 20 carries this season and has scored a rushing touchdown. And the Hawkeyes will definitely need to keep their eyes in the sky this weekend with this tough matchup. Just getting used to looking at him is, and I don't mean that in a bad way, it's just very unusual. Uh, I just, I can't, it's strange to see a quarterback of that height. The guy plays well though, he really plays well. And, um, that was kind of the talk of December back when he started in their bowl game. That was kind of the talk of them. I got a six foot nine quarterback, so that's the first time I heard about it. Now, let's bring in assistant sports editor Chris Werner. Chris, we've talked a little bit about the versatility of Nevada's massive quarterback, Nate Cox. What do you expect to see from him against this stout Iowa defense? I'm not sure what I expect to see from him this week, but I know that he'll see a lot, possibly a lot more than you know, any other quarterback scene of, of Kinnick Stadium. Uh, he's got to be the tallest quarterback to ever, ever grace the turf in Iowa City. Um, and there's not much that Iowa's defense can do about it other than, you know, those defensive linemen getting their hands up to their best of their ability to block those, block those passing lanes. Um, but ta in talking to Riley Moss, he said uh, he's just excited to, to see if that quarterback is really as tall as, as everybody says he is. Well, uh, I wouldn't be shocked if he actually is that height, Chris. Um, and Chris, this Iowa offense is currently the worst offense in all of college football. Is this the week you see them getting back on track? This is as good a week as any for, for the Iowa offense to get back on track. You know, they're facing a Nevada defense that allows 27 points a game, gave up 55 to Incarnate Word, and uh, 
the Iowa offense is going to get back uh, two receivers. There are rumors that after good days of practice, Nico Regani and Keegan Johnson could be back on the field. And so if I was going to score, you know, more than seven points in a game, this will be the week for it. Those two guys would be huge gets for this lackluster, better to say uh, than anything, uh, offense. Now, all right, Chris, the big moment is here. The Hawkeyes are massive favorites in this game, but who do you see winning? Yeah, I think I was going to take it. I think the Hawkeyes are favored by something like 23 points, um, but I don't see them getting to that total. I think somewhere around 20 to 20 to 13 or 20 to 10, uh, the Iowa defense is going to stand up like they have all year, but the Iowa offense is not going to not going to not going to get past 27. I'm with you there on a Hawkeye W, but I do have a little bit more faith that they can get things figured out on the offensive side. But thank you, Chris, and thank you for tuning in to another edition of Before the Kickoff. Be sure to check out the Daily Iowa YouTube channel and website for Hawkeye content posted throughout the week. And from the University of Iowa, I'm Michael Merrick, and have a wonderful weekend of football, everyone.